This is Matt from NoCodeTrainer.com. I hope you liked this video and you can take what you learned from it and incorporate it into your own bubble application. If you do, please make sure to click like and leave a comment in the comment section with how you'll use it inside of your application. If you'd like to be kept up to date with more tips and tricks you can use in your bubble app, please subscribe to our channel and be sure to check out NoCodeTrainer.com for more exclusive content. In this video, we're going to show you how you can add opacity to an image inside of your bubble application so that when you have your opacity set, the image will kind of have this sort of see-through effect. And you can even do things that when you hover over it, the image will no longer have the opacity set onto it. And in this example, we're actually even increasing the size of that image a bit. So how do we do this? Inside of bubble, what you need to do first is go into your settings tab go into general, scroll down to the area where you have your favicon general appearance. It's just a little bit about a quarter of way down the page. And then underneath the two different color areas, you have a checkbox for expose the option to add ID attribute to HTML elements. Check that box. Once you have that box checked, then you will have access to ID attribute input on every single element that you put onto the page, including the page itself. Now, what we have here is a add class try setup for the ID attribute. Now this is actually being used in coordination with a plugin. The plugin is classify and it is a free plugin. So once you install that plugin, you don't need to do anything else to make use of it. All you're gonna be doing is actually adding the class attribute for the ID. And this is what is allowing uh, your CSS IDs to recognize the correct element inside a bubble to apply the CSS to. So in this situation, we're using try. One of the main reasons why we actually selected the word try here, because it is up to you, you can put whatever you want. Uh, we didn't use IMG or anything like that to represent image because there's a strong possibility that bubble is utilizing that same class value inside of their CSS. And if there was ever a situation where bubble runs into your CSS not matching with theirs, they will use their CSS to override yours. And so whenever you wanna make sure that things like this are gonna be effectuating properly and are not going to actually affect other elements inside of your bubble application that you would maybe be unaware of because the ID attributes were set by bubble originally, then you wanna make use of something that's kind of random in a way. So here we're just using try. And then once you have that, I obviously put an element as an image into it. It could be dynamic. It doesn't make a difference. Then you're going to add an HTML element onto your page. You just draw out an HTML element onto the page. And then you need to put some code. And I have this code already in here. And so what you see is the very beginning is style as a tag. And then there's a style at the bottom. And the bottom one has this backslash to represent it's the end of it. And then everything in between is basically the style that we're setting onto this element. And we have dot try and the squarely brackets and then transition. Transition is giving us a speed and that's the speed at which it's going to change. And then underneath that we have dot try and then semicolon with hover. So what this is representing, it's the same element which we ID as try, but this one is representing when it is being hovered, then we wanna do something different here and so what we're doing different here is we're transforming it and the scale at which we transform it is increasing the size and you can add a higher value or a lower value or don't even use the transform and the transition if you don't want to. All right. Now the opacity here of try, we could very easily and we should just have that directly in the main section above where we are setting the transition. So let me go ahead and just get rid of that little portion there. So basically, Everything that's in between the squirrel, squirrely brackets basically is the type of code associated with the particular element. And in this instance, again, it's this same element, but when it's hovered. And so we're setting the opacity when it's hovered to one so that it basically has no opacity set onto it. And so that's all we needed to do to be able to make use of opacity on an image element because inside of the image element itself, there is no setting uh, at all available to you to add a 
sense of opaqueness or transparency to your images. So just making use of a little bit of code here. Again, the main code that you want, if you don't want to actually have the transition, the transition is the speed. And so we can just get rid of that. And then this transform is the increase in size and we can get rid of that. So if we preview this page now, as it is without those settings, we'll see a little bit of different effect that's just going to take away that uh, opacity. Now you can play around with these two and, and see how they maybe make changes. I'm not a coder myself. I've been able to just kind of learn enough to put some things together. So my thought right now, if I get rid of the transform scale, but I keep up here the transition, it might give us a little bit more of a smoother uh, movement from the opacity to not. So we can see here, it looks like it is a little bit smoother. So if we increase this uh, speed, I wish that would probably make it faster. So uh, let's see if we do the transition of, let's say one second. And let's see if we get any kind of a change going on here in terms of how fast uh, Bubble is taking a little bit of time to refresh it. Yeah, so you can see how it kind of fades in a little bit slower there, all right? So play around with those settings and, and see how you want them inside of your own application. You know, the settings that are in here in this example code are not necessarily what everybody is gonna want to use, but at least the opacity can get in there and you now know how to set that up. And hopefully you'll find a way to implement this into your own bubble application. Thanks for watching the video. Hope that you found this helpful. If you'd like to be able to get editor access, please make sure that you check out the site, nocodetrainer.com. The link is in the description to the video where you'll be able to gain access into the editor and be able to check out how things were set up within the application itself.